Do you know ARM? I mean, of course, the ARM processor and the ARM instructions and the ARM assembly, whatever. Well, ARM is in the news for strong arming some security researchers on Twitter and it's not looking good for them. This video is sponsored by Hextree.io and if you are interested in learning exploitation, be it x86, Intel assembly exploitation or ARM-based exploitation, check out Hextree.io. Anyway, let's have a look at how this all started. Azeria wrote on Twitter, looks like ARM wrote me a cease and desist letter to take down my domain armassembly.com because she is supposedly infringing on the ARM trademark. She of course just wants to use ARM to refer to their architecture and instruction, but ARM says, uh-uh, this is our trademark. So let's see, was this just the legal department that had no idea who Azeria was or is this alleged threat and Azeria has to comply? Let's see what happened. So here's the full email in case you want to see it. Um, she got an abuse notice, I think through her hosting provider where she was hosting her website where she advertised her ARM assembly and reverse engineering book and she must reply within the next 24 hours. So before we head further into this, uh, I want to introduce Azeria to you really quick in case you don't know her. She has very great resources on ARM assembly and ARM exploitation over on her website Azeria or company website Azeria Labs. These are some very comprehensive tutorials on ARM assembly including like tutorials how to set up a QAMO Raspberry Pi distribution and so forth to really get an ARM environment to practice all these different things. Really great tutorial, really good work. And she has been doing this for many years now and she's well known for her work with ARM. And because of her interest and her work in that area, she was even part of the ARM Research Summit in 2020, for example. Here, I believe Azaria or Maria Markstetter uh, gave a talk on uh, exploitation mitigations, especially, I guess, in respect to ARM. You can also see her talk here on the ARM Research YouTube channel. And not only that, a few years ago, ARM announced like this ARM Innovator program or whatever and featured Azeria. Check this out. And if you look into what is written here about this ARM Innovator program, they are writing. This interview is part of a series featuring interviews with members of the ARM Innovator program, which was launched last November to highlight the work of innovative technical experts from the ARM ecosystem. So they really acknowledge Azeria being part of this ARM ecosystem and doing great work and you know doing worthwhile stuff to help the community, doing it in her niche, the ARM exploitation and ARM security world. But now ARM flexed their mind muscles and came back and hit her in the face by taking down armassembly.com. Here's how the website looked from the web archive. So on armassembly.com, Azaria advertised her own book, Arm Assembly and Reverse Engineering, covering arm assembly internals and exploitation and that kind of stuff. But again, it might just be the legal term sending out something prematurely, not really thinking about the implications or ramifications of that, or whether it maybe was kind of like fair use, or maybe it just gets resolved. And so she also got a response from a trademark attorney at Arm, and they will provide some full comments uh, soon. Now you can guess how the community reacted. It pretty much exploded into ARM's face. There were multiple articles written about it and of course people were sharing it all over the place. But I think what's also interesting here in the story is for example this comment from Sorbo. I've gotten the same thing but from Intel. Even though I was using Intel short for intelligence. This person probably had a domain, I don't know, like securityintel.com or something and Intel then came, wait, stop, you are infringing our trademark, even though he just, you know, abbreviated Intel with intelligence. But you see, companies are going after domains. And actually, this happened to me as well, because one day I was like looking at available domains and I realized that facebooks.com was still available, written with zeros and s. And I thought, hmm, I don't know what to use it for, but it could be like like a fun project. Of course, I'm not doing any malicious phishing with that, but you never know. Maybe, you know, there's a client engagement at some point that where this domain could be useful for, or, you know, for some funny stuff, maybe hosting some CTF challenges on that domain or whatever. I don't know. I thought it's a funny domain, so I purchased it. And it didn't take long after this domain was registered. Apparently, Facebook has an automated system that notices similar domains getting registered because I received an email from the Meta Legal Department. They were trying to contact me regarding Facebook Facebook.com, basically that I'm infringing on their trademark with my domain and um, I have to hand it over. So yeah, this is a thing that's happening uh, with domains. I guess uh, be careful. But there also were some nuanced or critical responses. Errata Bob, for example, say that 
This is a trademarking issue and companies need to aggressively defend their trademark. And he was making an example with creating an auto repair shop and call it Tesla Repair. It could be confused. You might think, oh, is this an official Tesla Repair company or not? And I definitely do get that point to some extent, but I think there has to be some confusion. And while legally maybe the argument is here pretty clear, I don't know what the legal is, I think from a moral standpoint or if we like actually like debate this topic, I do think it is really only a problem if there is confusion by customers. And to be honest, I don't think that the armassembly.com website looks in any way really like the arm company website or so. Arm is not included with the official arm logo and why would arm use kind of like this blue fox lady there? It makes no sense. So I don't know. I feel like most people wouldn't be confused here and think that, that this is officially by the arm company. Also on top of that, I feel like even in our bubble, most people don't even realize that ARM is a company because we hear about it in respect to the ARM architecture. We hear that MacBooks now have the ARM architecture. We know our mobile phones run ARM, our Android phones run ARM, we know Raspberry Pis run ARM. So when we talk about ARM, we usually refer to the architecture. We never really think of this business and company that's behind it. Of course, from the company perspective and the legal perspective, ARM, that is the company. But I feel like from, you know, like the normal people like me, if you mention ARM, I'm not thinking of the company, I'm thinking of the architecture. I was actually digging a little bit deeper into this matter because luckily for Intel, we actually have x86. So x86 is the architecture and it could be implemented by Intel or AMD, but we can freely use x86 and we don't have to be worried to infringe any trademarks because you know, the company is actually Intel or AMD. But then I researched, is there a trademark on x86? And then I came up with this backstory. Turns out that back in the days, Intel sued AMD for the trademark infringement of 386. So 386, that was like the processor name, I believe. And that's where the x86 came from. You know, like you have different numbers that end with x86. So they tried to trademark this, but they failed in court because you can't trademark simple numerical uh, combinations. They are too generic. So eventually Intel abandoned the x86 naming scheme and moved over to Pentium. So now it's Intel Pentium and then they could trademark trademark Pentium. But that's actually the reason why we can freely use x86. But at the same time, we cannot use ARM because they didn't make the same mistake basically with the numerals. They were just, you know, saying it's ARM. Now, what's also interesting is that basically any big company, they have some policies around how to use their trademark and what way it's okay and in what way they say it's not okay. And ARM actually also has here terms and policies how their trademark is supposed to be used. And you can see here, for example, valid ways how it's allowed to use their trademark. So you can use ARM but always use the registered trademark R, you know, ARM, R, and then you can combine it with ARM architecture, ARM brand, ARM core, ARM ecosystem, or ARM dash based, that is also okay. But you always have to add this registered trademark thing. So you cannot write ARM technology, it has to be ARM R technology. Here's also some more examples, what's okay to write and how it's incorrect. So it's okay to say it's an ARM based mobile phone, but it's not okay to say ARM mobile phone. So I don't know if that's actually like a legal requirement how you use it here, or if that's just like a suggestion how they wish their, their trademark would be used. I don't know like all the legal you know, details here. I guess if you just wanna do it always completely right, you wanna write ARM always with the registered R. Unless you talk about announcing a new product, like the company itself, then you say ARM announces a new product and it's incorrect if you use the R. I don't understand the logic, but those are the rules, okay? There are also some more don'ts and in these don'ts it also says here for example that do not use the ARM trademark. I do wonder why they are not using the registered trademark in here. I feel like that's wrong. Anyway, do not use the ARM trademark, blah, 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 blah. And this includes also as a domain name or your social media name or handle. So you are not supposed to call yourself like on Twitter ARM exploiter or something like that. Then you would infringe ARM's trademark. So after all this happened and I feel like, well, Azaria does good things for the ARM ecosystem and they have worked with her before. So I'm sure, you know, this is more like a mistake by the legal department and they figure something out. You know, maybe they officially give her like a license or allowance, like a piece of paper. You would be infringing, but here we allow you with your company uh, to use the trademark in that variation or something, you know, write some legal letter or something like this that she's then fine. I think that would have been the way to go. But then she updates and says, 
Well, the following blogs and domains will no longer exist. ArmAssembly.com, ArmReversing.com, ArmExploitation.com and ArmBasics.de. So she has to give these domains over to Arm. And I did not expect that and that is really disappointing. And you can see I responded here because usually I'm not keen to like really like push the drama, whatever, you know, people were already talking about it. It's not like I would have made any difference like talking about it. And also I always like hope for the best and I just thought, okay, people are already complaining. It will probably resolve. But now that it didn't resolve, I felt like I wanted to uh, voice my support here. I did not expect this to go down this path and that's disappointing. Yeah. Anyway, lots of people have obviously purchased her book and so they had a little bit fun with it and now they replaced the arm with leg assembly. So yeah, the internet had fun afterwards. Which actually is also apparently a violation because you are not supposed to make fun of the trademark according uh, to the trademark policies and I feel like that's making fun of the arm assembly. So that's probably also not allowed. If you want to see some other videos, you can click here and otherwise, thanks so much for watching. And if you want to learn more about arm exploitation, obviously check out Azaria stuff or check out hextree.io where we create online courses around exploitation, x86 exploitation, also ARM exploitation, but also web hacking and all the kinds of different IT security topics. We are still in the early phases, but we are slowly building out our courses. So check us out, hextree.io.